Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in our last video, in part 1 of the treehouse build, you saw how we basically found the location that we wanted, we leveled out the terrain, sort of set down the foundations of the treehouse, as well as planting the trees, and began to build the first tower. In today's episode, you're going to see us continue a lot further with that, and pretty much start to get the general structure of the treehouse complete. So let's get to it. So you'll notice from last video, we ended off with trying to build the first tower. However, coming back the next day, we decided that we would start with a central column first, and so I started by building a spiral staircase going up the central tree, and then building out from there. So you'll know from watching part 1 that any building piece that you put down that's clipped into a tree is considered a foundational piece because the game treats it like it's touching the terrain or touching the ground. And so therefore, as I was building my spiral staircase, all I had to do was clip a wooden pole or wooden beam, a horizontal beam, into the actual tree. And that would allow me to continue building up the tree because I'd basically be putting foundation pieces as we were going up the tree. Once I'd gotten to a height that I thought was about right for the spiral staircase where we'd begin to build the actual base and the floor of the base, I had to figure out how I was going to build overhanging pieces. Because unlike another game, let's say Minecraft, in Minecraft you could just hold shift, hang over the edge, and then continue building outwards and hang over and build. But in Valheim you can't really hang over the pieces. One way to build outwards is to have your beams sticking out from the sides of the floor piece that you're standing on, and then snap more pieces to it that way. After spending a bit more time building, I decided that I was just going to have a central column or a central structure that would be kind of the main hub of the overall treehouse design. And at this point, I decided that I would just keep it to the central tree and not connect it to any of the outside trees yet. So we could only really build about three or four floor tiles away from the actual center tree. So once we had the general floor plan of the central column done, it was time to think about the walls. At this point, I knew I didn't want to just have a square, rectangular, central column. I felt like I wanted to go, as I said before, kind of the Ewok-style villages where they're more rounded. And so I decided to round off the corners of the structure. Now, as I rounded this off, though, you'll notice the structure, because it's not a complete square or rectangle, that meant that the roofs didn't quite really line up or match up. And so you'll see in the video, I spent a lot of time tinkering and sort of deciding how I wanted to do the roofs and messing around with the different pieces and seeing what works and what doesn't. That does take up a large chunk of my time because at this point, I didn't know what worked and what didn't work. And that's actually the fun part of building is going through this process of testing, retesting, breaking things down, building them back up again until you have the right design that you want. At one point here, I knew that as I was building the roofs for the central column, whenever things were snapped to the tree, they were also foundational piece. So then it was trying to figure out, well, how could I also build on the core wood logs as well as snap them to the central tree column to get the maximum structural stability. Once I had the general central structure sorted, I decided to move on and start building a smaller little tower on one of the corner trees. As you can see here, as I'm building out, it takes a lot of back and forth trying to figure out how I can connect pieces further out and build outwards on overhanging floor tiles. The good thing is I was able to snap a couple long 4 meter core wood log poles to provide me with that foundation so that I can continue to build outwards. Also, one thing, try not to build at night when you can't see what you're deleting, because this is what happens. So once I managed to build out onto the corner tree, then it was just a case of thinking about, well, what kind of design do we want these side towers, these corner towers to be? Now I'm sure as you would have seen from the thumbnails and some other images, we eventually do go for a circular tower design, but initially when building it, it did take a lot of back and forth and testing, especially using the core wood logs underneath the floor tiles to provide more support. It did take some back and forth, but again, like I said before, that's the fun part of the building. As we got the floor tiles down, I figured out that I could use the half walls to do one click turns every time I placed one down to start to give a bit of a curved edge to it. The initial design ended up being sort of a D shape with a curve on one side and a flat straight side. However, eventually we will change this up to do a full circular pattern so we can have a circular tower going all the way around the tree trunk. One tip for anyone building circular designs, it's always best to build it with the walls first using half walls and rotating them one click as you build them to create that circular design and then worry about snapping the wood floors to cover up the holes and the gaps. Because the wood floors are square shaped and you can only snap them in grids, you're inevitably going to have corners sticking out. So what you can do there is break away those pieces and in those gaps, use the smaller one by one floors to rotate them and snap them to the edges of the half wall pieces, kind of overlapping them a bit, but at least then you're covering it up and still giving it that circular design from the outside. 
once we had the general shape down same thing it was just time to put up the walls and put up the roofs and this part here took a little practice and a little testing because as the roof started to overlap it became a little bit tricky making sure that i covered all the spaces and pretty much once i'd figured out the general shape of the towers with the central section as well as the first tower i built i repeated this process twice over by building one other tower that was raised up higher and then another one at the back so that i could have another living room area and then a storage area the process to build these towers was much quicker because I was doing them for the second and third time, so there really isn't much to it. I just repeated the same process of putting down the floors, creating a circular half wall system, and then building the roofs over top. So that's pretty much it guys for part two. We managed to get the towers pretty much set now and the general structure of the treehouse complete. In part three, you'll see that we will add a bit more decorations to it, make it feel just that little bit more homey. But also, we managed to use stone to help us as well. Stay tuned, and I'll see you guys next time.